key clock. Well, uh, hi, I'm uh, Ivo Woltering. Um, last uh, two weeks ago, I went to Java One, and there I saw a great talk about key clock. It was about uh, microservices. How do we uh, secure them? So, key clock. What the f is key clock? Uh, I'm going to tell you how I set it up, and then I'll uh, really demo it. Uh, I'm, this is my own art, the, the small thing below. I, I drew this myself before I knew what their logo was, so hey. <laughs> um, Keycloak is an integrated single sign-on and identity management uh, tool. And it's completely built on the protocols you see below there. It, it should make your life a lot easier if you write services and microservices and web applications that need sign-on. Because of these protocols it's uh, fully integratable with social networking uh, logons like sign in with uh, Facebook, sign in with Twitter and it makes it really easy. So what did, uh, did I do to try this out is all for Docker and Docker for all. So I created three Docker containers uh, one with Postgres and linked a key cloak Docker container that is. But I wanted to set it, uh, the whole authentication and authorization uh, separately from my own server. So I also set up a Wildfly application server. During the presentations I followed, this part wasn't uh, talked about. They made it seem really easy to create applications with key cloak and uh, secure them with key, in key cloak. And it actually is easy, but <laughs> you do need some setup, uh, and I'll show that. Postgres, Docker image, this command I used only once. Uh, after this, I can just start it with uh, the name given after dash dash name. I also made a key cloak server. I wanted to connect it, link it to the Postgres image, so that I can really persist my users. Yeah, that's kind of important. Wisely wild wildfly. I had autocorrection on, on my uh, presentation thing and I couldn't type in wildfly. <laughs> it always, it, it uh, corrected to wildly, constantly. I uh, used the standard wildfly image but I did some extras. Uh, I first um, enabled the admin console as it's a development environment for me. I wanted to have uh, complete access. And this is the part where I hook in Keycloak as a security provider for the application server. What it does is, if in the from, it uh, inherits from my admin wildfly that I just showed here. And one six one final version of Keycloak is the latest version at this time. So I get the the adapter software, uh, the module from uh, the downloads from JBoss, uh, and uh, unzip it at the correct location, and then the module will be available. And uh, the set commands are a bit more than you uh, see here. There are actually three commands. These manipulate the standalone XML file of the Wildfly installment uh, so that it really gets hooked in. So when you start Wildfly, uh, Keycloak will be recognized as a security provider. So that's it. Now we have it. Now it's uh, demo time. Very difficult uh, Java application. This is actually the only um, class, uh, really interesting part of uh, at least. I have a hack me uh, path a logout so that I can log out. And I have two endpoints that I want to expose. Uh, but we st still need two things to do. You still need to make your web XML and tell uh, what you need and which uh, endpoints you want to secure and how with which roles. That part doesn't change. But then, uh, Except from this and this simple file, you, have, you don't have to change <coughs> any Java code, so, so it's not really invasive. Uh, I'll show you. It's it's put there. 
Keycloak JSON file. And uh, I'll show you how you create this because you don't have to um, uh, remember this or type it over or something. Like this. You, you, <laughs> it's being, it will be generated for you. So let's get there. Keycloak admin console. Um, Keycloak works with realms. So you can have a single sign on. You can, ha can have multiple um, microservices within the same realm and then the uh, logon of the one microservices can also be propagated to the other microservices if they use the same roles and all that stuff. So you have to define your client that needs to be secured. Well, I have the HackMe service and I didn't change a lot. I only told it what is the base, the root URL of my actual app, uh, microservice and which are the parts that I want to secure. You also need users, of course, so I created a user and you have to have roles. But you have to do a role mapping. So Ethernet got a user role, the user we just created in uh, the roles. And the same for the other one, it has all the roles, admin and user. So you have credentials. Actually, you can say it's uh, if you change the password of the user, uh, you can say it's temporary. So the first time they have to change this. So I'll do that. Eh? I'll low. And I'll make it temporary. So we'll see what, what happens. And how to put it in your application. That's the one. You just cut and paste. Eh? That key cloak JSON file that you have to put in your web info. So that's about it for configuration. Well, let's see how, what happens. Um, the trouble is that you'll be immediately redirected to Keycloak. And of course, we are going to try the Evonet. Uh, hello, was there? Hello. And it will actually say, from, you need to change your password and activate, to activate your account immediately. So, and hey, I've got, my service call but if i change this one to admin we'll say sorry can't do won't do it won't ask for a re-login because you are already logged in you just have no permissions here where was i oh yeah i wanted to show the uh, right now you have uh, one logged in so you can see hack me services logged in um you can uh, log out every uh, everything here now it will ask to log in again because you're not logged in anymore. So if I do the admin, yeah, it works first time. And I can also log out here because that's not a um, uh, secured URL. So I can always log out, throw nothing back. So you don't see actually it having, but if I do a refresh here, then you log on again. Now we have also the social networking integration. So I provided one, but you can go to the Keycloak administration console and say, these are the, uh, the supported providers, it's quite complete. And I added Facebook. Well, it lo actually looks very simple. I had to go to Facebook to create an app and give it a name. And, uh, and that was the difficult part for me. I had to uh, copy this URL somewhere here to, yeah, because after authentication with Facebook, you have to go back and we can enable this. And if you go to this screen and refresh, ta-da! And that's actually, uh, I think this is really, really great. Because this is what you want to have. So now I'm going to show you that it works. And because this is the first time you log on with an app uh, as a new user, of course, you have to authenticate through Facebook. Well, this is what happens now. So I'll say, OK. And now also my key cloak says, hey, now you have to update the credentials I got from Facebook. So now I actually have more fields there. And it will remember this. You have actually been logged in. And uh, now you have uh, Facebook integration also. And the, the nice thing here is if, if I refresh this page, you actually see the Hackney demo there now. The next time, if you log out, then it won't ask me to uh, 
well, but it don't, won't ask me to authenticate the application again. Let's try that again. Yay! So it works. I was uh, pretty impressed at the at, those, uh, at the conference, and uh, because this is actually something I was looking for. Because I write a lot of small services for my own uh, hobby projects, and not all of them are public. And uh, well, I, this seems like the solution for me. So uh, uh, they have uh, the adapters. Eh? If you want to have the security providers uh, for Tomcat, Jetty. Uh, JBoss and Wildfly, uh, not for Glassfish and not for Resphere as far as I know. That's it? Yeah, you guys too.